So this short presentation is going to be about two concepts, competitive exclusion and resource partitioning. They're related, a little bit confusing, so hopefully I'm going to clear them up here. First thing we're going to talk about is competitive exclusion. So is evolution driven by competition or by cooperation? So I'm sure you've heard of, you know, competition as being the driver of evolution. And that is true, but um, where is that competition? Competition exists within a species. So within a species, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be a competition for resources. These uh, animals here, if they're impalas or something, they're going to be maybe competing for mates in this picture. They're going to be competing for food. And so therefore, you know, the ones that are most adapted or that do the best are going to be the ones that pass on their genes. So yes, competition does drive evolution in that way. But what about competition between species? Because what competitive exclusion tells us is that competition between species doesn't last very long. It gets, it gets evolutionarily wiped out. So that's what we're going to talk about. Um, because, as it turns out, that systems that end up partitioning their resources uh, are going to do better than systems that don't. And they're going to be more stable and they're going to be, have an evolutionary advantage. So there's those two words, com uh, uh, competitive exclusion and resource partitioning. But let's talk a little bit more about them in a diagrammatic form to make it really simple. So if this is one species, and that's a different species, and these circles represent their niches, that's everything about their species, everything that they do. So these two species, um, their niches do not overlap. There is no competition whatsoever between each other. Now within each circle, individuals are competing, yes, but these species, the niches don't overlap, there's no competition whatsoever. Okay, so, um, Nothing's going to change in that situation. But let's say these species become a little closer. So there's a little bit of niche overlap. When those niches overlap, there's going to be some uh, pressure for those that do better. Those that don't compete are going to do better. Um, so there's going to be interspecific competition. So now we're two species, uh, two organisms of a different species are actually competing against each other. Um, what that is going to end up looking like is that one species perhaps is just going to do better than the other species in that little region of niche overlap, and they're going to outcompete them. The green species in this case, uh, the ones that the ones the the or the the, species, the organisms in that niche overlap didn't do as well, so they didn't pass on their genes. Um, so, so in that second situation, that led to evolution, it changed the evolution, uh, it changed the, uh, the niches, it, the niches evolved. The blue evolution, uh, the blue species niche grew and the green species niche shrunk. So what happens if two species become, you know, have a huge niche overlap? Now, if soon as species get close, uh, two different species have a little bit of niche overlap, um, that that overlap gets selected against, you'd think that this would never happen. But this does happen. This happens when we bring an invasive species to a new place, or maybe there's just a new colonization. So for a brief period of time anyway, the niches overlap a lot. So we're competing against the same uh, same niche, niche area there. So what's going to happen in this case? Generally speaking, when competition is heavy, one species wins out entirely and the other species becomes extinct or has to move away. Um, you're going to see this happen a lot. This is one of the biggest problems with invasive species. They come in and they outcompete and the native species disappear. So let's see how this relates to resource partitioning. Okay, because this is competitive exclusion. Competitive exclusion really states that no species, no two species, can occupy the same niche for long. They will compete and ex one will exclude the other, either entirely or at least in that specific niche area. Um, what this does is it leads to partitioning the resources. So let's look at that. Um, this is just another way of looking at that same diagram. Uh, so we have two species, or we have 
uh, yeah, we have two species in the red and in the uh, blue, and the species are using the same resource in that um, purple area. So what's going to happen? And there's the number of individuals. You can see that on the y-axis, you have uh, you know a little bit on the, both extremes uh, are occupying that niche. But what's going to happen eventually is they're just not going to occupy that niche because those organisms, those individuals who for whatever reason competed for in that purple area, they just do, didn't do as well. So the behavior gets changed. Um, so if if howls and ox and uh, howls if hawks and owls have the same prey um, in that middle area, they're going to kind of divide it up. So in this case, perhaps the hunt the uh, hawks are going to start hunting by day and the owls will hunt at night. That's the way they're partitioning their resources so that competition is reduced because comp no one wants to compete. Competition is, um, is, is no advantage to competition in this case. So here's just another example of partitioning the resources. This is when it's already happened. When you look at a tree, you see all these different birds in a tree, but if you look very carefully, the tree, the, the birds are not competing for resources because perhaps um, in this case, there is a bird that's only gonna stay at the top, there's a bird that's gonna stay in the middle, and there's gonna be a bird that stays at the bottom. So they have been selected to change their behavior so that there's no competition for resources. They've partitioned the resources. Now they didn't, you know, make a, an agreement, but that's what happened um, through years of evolution. So we're going to apply this idea of competitive exclusion in several ways in class. Um, one of them is in washing your hands. I want us to think about when we wash our hands, how can we apply this concept of competitive exclusion? Um, when we treat a cut or an abrasion, I'm going to teach you about compost tea and why people use that. And most importantly, when we take a course of antibiotics. So that's just a little bit of a teaser and what we're going to be talking about in class next time.